Welcome back to a course on Calculus RS Integration. In this lecture, we'll start with the definition of refinement. Refinement of a partition. Okay, the partition P star P asterisk is called a refinement of P if P star contains P. If we have to put it in other words, it shall be put in the terms of every point of P is a point of P asterisk or P star. In simpler notations, if you consider A to B, okay, uh, this collection of points is my partition P. Along with this, if you add few more points. If you see, I, I have just added only one point and this collection of points I am taking as P star and I can see that all the members of P are also members of P star whereas the converse may not be true. Hence, P star is called as the refinement of P. Okay. What is the purpose of refinement? Yes, of course. Whenever we define Riemann integration or Riemann Stelzius integration, we say for all possible partitions, for all possible partitions, which means we must be able to relate to partitions and say which is finer, which is which is the refinement of the other. So that idea has to be there in our mind. Okay. Next uh, definition is common refinement. The partition P star is called as a common refinement of two partitions P1 and P2 if P star is P1 union P2. Okay, here let us go with some example that would be uh, better to understand these things. Let us consider the interval 0, 1. Let my partition P1 to be uh, 0, 0 0.25. 0 0.5, 0 0.75 and 1. This is, let this be my partition P1. And let me choose P2 to be 0, 0 0.5, 1. And P3 to be 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.75, 1. Okay, here let us see all possible things. Let us talk about the refinement. Let us talk about the common refinement. Okay, uh, supposing hmm, let me have these two, these three alone. With this, let us talk. Okay, here if you see your P2 is sorry, your P1 is refinement of P2 and P3. Okay. When you make union of P2 and P3, what are you going to get? You are going to get your P1, right? So, in this case, this P1 is called as the common refinement. So, P1 is common refinement. Now, you may ask me that are there any possible 
refinement which may not be a common refinement of two things yes of course that may be done now let me consider p4 to be a like i think i must not give a interval bracket here these are sets sorry guys these are sets not intervals okay uh, let me choose my p4 to be a 0 0.2 0.5 0.81 if you see all the elements of p2 is the members of p4 but among this if you make union of any two things that will not be going to be equal to p4 here p4 is a refinement of P2, but it is not being common refinement to any of the possible partitions over here. So remark, we did something in the previous lecture. Now let us prove that. That is, let us write that as a result. Uh, LPF and UPF forms a bounded set. Okay, let us start the proof and do things formally. Given that f is a bounded function, okay, uh, given f is a bounded function, then there exists two numbers let us say them as uh, small m and big m such that small m less than or equals f of x less than or equals big m and we know that m i is defined as supremum of f of x and uh, small m i is defined as infimum of f of x over the interval x in x i minus 1 comma x i right you know these things now if you pay some attention to look at these things okay uh, i think i will have to do with some other color it looks similar with the uh, black okay Right? We don't know how the function behaves. Okay? Let us consider the function behaves this way. And this is the interval AB. Okay? So, we, we have said that this function has to be a bounded function in the specified interval. Okay? If that is so, you can very well see that the function attains maximum at this point in this interval AB and attains minimum at this point in the interval AB. Okay. They need not attain its maximum or minimum at the points A and B. If it is monotonic, then it will happen. Since the function may or may not be monotonic and is bounded, we have it occurs maximum at two points. So, this point sorry excuse me for the bad drawing so this point is our m and uh, sorry again sorry and this point is our big m okay A, here you may very well see that the function lie between this m and big m between a and b okay that is if you extend these lines and shade the common thing the function lies between these things all those stuff if you see your function lies in this shaded region mm -hmm. yes this is what we mean by boundedness okay just make a things and look at the common region your function has to lie in the common region yes this function is bounded okay and we have split this into sub intervals 
and I'm looking for the maximum and minimum value at this sub interval. So here in this interval, this is the minimum value and this is the maximum value. Okay, uh, let me mark that in different color. So this is the minimum value and this is the maximum value in the sub interval. If you look at here, this is going to be the minimum value and this is going to be the maximum value. Okay, I have given you two instances. Here if you see, this is my mi and this is my big mi. Okay. Now I am just going to make some comparisons between small m and small mi, big mi and big m, whatever may be the case, right? So what is going to happen? My small m is the lowest among all those infimum values and big m is the maximum among all those maximum values. So with which we will start our discussion, okay? Uh, clearly, mi is bigger than or equals m. What I mean to say here is, this m has to be the smallest for all i runs from 1 to n. Okay. So, this one we write it as mi bigger than or equals m. Okay. We may put this way or... Uh, We'll have this as it is. Okay. Now, what am I doing is that I am multiplying delta xi on both sides. We know that this delta xi is a positive quantity. So, the inequality is not affected by multiplying a positive quantity. I am adding these kind of all possible things. Summation i runs from 1 m i delta x i. What is it? Okay, here uh, we have m. I forgot to write m. So, this is m times of delta x i. If you look at here, this m is independent of i. Hence, you may take m outside and summation i runs from 1 to n delta x i is smaller than or equals summation i runs from 1 to n small m i delta x i. Here, what is it? It is the lower Riemann sum. So, what we are going to have is that L P F. Okay, what is this? If you see, this is your delta X1. This is your delta X2. This is your delta X3. And this way, it is going on. And this is your delta X1. And you are, you are adding all these things. So, you will land in the length of this interval and the length of this interval is b minus a which is to be multiplied with m so m times of b minus a let us mark this as equation one okay now we are going to proceed with the same kind of argument for which let us consider let me do here consider small m i is sorry big m i is smaller than or equals m okay and uh, this tells me the same arguments m i delta x i less than or equals m times of delta x i and what should i do is that i next i am going to take the summation i runs from 1 to n m i delta x i less than or equals summation uh, i runs from 1 to n big m delta x i and this is my u p f and this is m times of b minus a let us mark this as equation 2 now combining 1 and 2 so we are combining which means what always lower integral is smaller than or equals upper integral because in each sub interval okay uh, let me do that too okay so i use purple color for this uh, m i is smaller than or equals m i always for each i now you can multiply and do all those stuff this gives you your lpf is always smaller than or equals your 
UPF. So this has to be understood by our own and hence from 1 and 2 what we can conclude is that M times of B minus A less than or equals LPF which is less than or equals UPF which is going to be M times of B minus A. Okay. And when you take the supremum over all possible partitions, your LPF and UPF becomes equal if the function is Riemann integrable. And that gives you an another interesting result. Okay. So let me write that in different color. It is not a part of this result. But for the ideology purpose, I am giving you. Okay. Let me write that as a remark. If f is Riemann integrable, then LPF, supremum of all those stuff. Okay. M times of B minus A less than or equals integral A to B f of x dx less than or equals big M times of B minus A where the small m and big m are in the usual sense that is done in this result. Thank you.